Okay, hi everyone. This is Leon. Today I'm going to show you a quick introduction on how to install the Reticulate package in R Studio so that you can use the um, different features of Python libraries uh, integrated within R. So you can use a separate script for R and then knit everything together with R and Python into one neat looking R markdown document. That would be the best use case for such an installation. I'm sure some of you already know that you can use separately the uh, Jupyter Notebooks for Python, and you can use RStudio separately for R Markdown, and then combine the PDFs together. But in the event that you want to use everything on one platform, you definitely need the Reticulate package in RStudio. So before we move any further, I will do a quick demo and introduction into the four quadrants in our studio so that we're all on the same page and that we can follow this, uh, this setup, the, the UI, the user interface. So the first quadrant, if you liken this to a coordinate plane, and I set it up in such a way that it very closely mimics a coordinate plane. So that way we can say that this first quadrant, the global environment is where you would see different variable assignments and data frames and so on and so forth. So as you're working in the second quadrant, your code window, Every time you pass in a variable or make an assignment statement, this global environment window fills up rather quickly. So to clear that out, you would use this brush tool over here, and that would clear the objects from the workspace. Moving further in our third quadrant is uh, where we'll install our packages. This is known as the console window. And inside here, you can also use this as a calculator. For example, let's say we wanna do a quick calculation, like five plus five equals what, 10? So that's pretty neat. And here, this is where you'll see the different error messages uh, pertaining to the different commands you're running. And lastly, we have our fourth quadrant where you'll see your, um, your file directories, plots, if you're making any plots, packages. So you can also install packages from here and uh, your viewer. And you can also access various documentations here as well. Uh, so. One thing I can't stress enough since we're on the fourth quadrant is always, always, always ensure you're in the correct working directory. So if you're not in the correct working directory, what will often end up happening is that um, you will find yourself not being able to load in different data sets uh, and you'll have a lot of trouble. So always make sure you set the correct working directory and that your data set is inside that working directory, the file you're saving is inside the same working directory, that's best practice. But that is a conversation for another time, potentially for another demo. Uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and clear out the console in the third quadrant. And let's go ahead and install our Reticulate package. So the way you would install any package specific to R, because remember, because Reticulate is still, we're making this installation through R Studio within the R environment first. Yes, it pertains to Python, but we don't have the full functionality of uh, Python's many libraries like Pandas and Scikit-Learn and so on and so forth yet. So we have to make this traditional installation through our traditional approach of install.packages open and close parentheses. This is the proper syntax for making any kind of installation specific to R. So remember the syntax, it's gonna come in handy and it's very important. So if I proceed to type in reticulate and tab, or you can either type it in or just hit tab, it'll automatically put this in quotation marks for you. All that's left to do is for us to run this line. So to run a command, uh, we get to the end of the line and, and then we go ahead and type uh, or press down control on our keyboards and then hit enter. If you have a Mac, I think that would be the command and then enter. Uh, but because this is a Windows machine, we'll go ahead and type in or press down control plus enter. And sometimes you'll get a message like this. I've already done this installation many times and you can just move forward and press yes. It'll restart your R session. And now it will install the reticulate package. And you'll see that running up there. And it's a fairly fast install with usually without any kind of problems. And uh, now what you'll see is that the package is in your uh, the same directory where you've installed our studio. So we're good to go. 
Next, what we want to do is remember if you want to use this package every single time you use any package that you've installed for so the rule would be for every package you want to have a library so it's a one-to-one -one. so for me to use this package i need to always load in the library the the best way to do this or the most efficient way would be to go back to the second quadrant here uh, into our code window and type in library reticulate in parentheses library reticulate because if we don't do this and i'll show you what will happen if we don't do this let's see what happens if we don't lo load in our reticulate library first if we go into console and try to make another installation because i want to make a point here so to, to make this demonstration i have to mention the following anytime you do a python installation it's going to be different than this install dot packages reticulate in parentheses that I've highlighted specific to Python you're going to do pi so memorize the syntax it's important whenever you're making the reticulate package active you you'll now install Python libraries through py underscore install open and close parentheses uh, and then for example let's say pandas right and what should already be alarming to you is as notice as I was typing this in, nothing was getting pre-filled for me. So that should already tell you something's not working. So if I go ahead and press down control enter, it's surely going to give me an error that says uh, could not find function pi underscore install. And why is that? Because we failed to load in our reticulate library up top. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And now let's go ahead and try to do a pi underscore install pandas. Hit control enter. Oh, before one other very important thing, before running that command in the um, code window, you want to run, you don't just say library reticulate and not run it. So we have to run that from the uh, code window. So we'll highlight it and just hit run or press control enter. So you'll see here in the console window now that we've loaded in the reticulate package and sometimes it'll give us a message that it was built under a certain version don't concern yourself too much with that right now um, it's not a specific kind of error it's more or less of just a warning message for version control so now that we've loaded in the reticulate library we can safely move forward to install different um uh, libraries from or specific to Python. So as I proceed to type this in, you'll see we already have a pop up window that's pre filling this uh, syntax for us. It's telling us what this means. If you're familiar with Microsoft Excel, it's very similar. Whenever you type in a function, it already tells you what this function does and the different arguments it takes in. So we'll go ahead and, and uh, let's say we want to install pandas now. We'll type in pandas and press down control enter. And don't be alarmed if you don't see anything happening right away. Notice there's a bit of a, uh, a delay. And here you see that all requested packages have already been installed because I've made this installation before. So now we can use, uh, for, definitely use pandas for Python in R. And anytime you need to make another installation specific to Python, always remember load in the number one library reticulate library make sure you do that where you code but when you make an installation make sure you do that in the console window so learn to separate the two that's very important uh, you'll see you'll find yourself running into a lot of errors if you try to make an installation inside an r chunk within an r markdown document okay so let's say we want to test this out and put this into an r markdown file and knit it together uh, we'll use R and Python both as examples. So first and foremost, you want to ensure that you do indeed save your document as R Markdown, not just an R script. Um, so what we can do here is proceed to go to File, Save As, and uh, I want to put this in this directory. So I'm going to go ahead and actually change my working directory. And I want to do it through Reticulate Demo that's in my PC, my documents. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And oh, I'm going to call this actually. I'm going to go ahead and call this. We'll call this reticulate.r capital R M D and hit save or press enter. 
Uh, yes, I am sure I want to change the type of this file so that it is no longer an R script. Yes. Excellent. Next thing, again, and I can't stress this enough, in your fourth quadrant, always, always, always ensure you're in the correct working directory. So let's go ahead and change our directory here. You can do it through a command by uh, specifying set working directory. I'm a little bit old school sometimes, and perhaps eventually I'll change my ways, but I will do it the manual way. And as you can see now in the fourth quadrant, we have our new file, which is reticulate.rmd. Um, we have a sample data set to load in. And if you know the syntax between R and Python is different for loading in a CSV file or any kind of file for that matter, uh, we'll explore both uh, in just a second. So going back to our second quadrant, we can erase this uh, first line because in uh, any proper R markdown syntax, what you want to have first is what we call YAML parameters. Um, Y-A-M-L, and those parameters are denoted as follows. They start with three dashes and they end with three dashes. So you can do something like this. And on the second line, you specify the title, author, and date, and then output. So most commonly, if you're doing um, any kind of written work uh, that involves a PDF file, uh, you will knit this to a PDF document like so, okay? You can leave title blank unless you want to specify a title. Same thing for author and same thing for date. So after these YAML parameters, you um, want to specify the different uh, options for your output or your chunks. So the difference between um, a dot R extension, just a simple uh, R file, is that an R markdown file has what we call chunks. So every time you're coding something, it's inside, it's embedded inside this chunk. So it starts off uh, like with the three ticks, uh, open bracket, R, uh, and, and usually just closes out the, the bracket right here and you can parse in different options. So this is just my basic setup syntax. I, I want it to be like this. You can always mimic the same setup or specify your own. So after this chunk, we're actually gonna get to some code. So to insert a chunk, so let's say I wanna make my first um, code in R, I'm going to go here up top and notice how when I made this into an R markdown document, it gave us these options to insert. I want to insert R first and automatically it gives you the R chunk Inside the R chunk is where you put your R code. So let's say we want to load in this wine data set. Um, we can give it any kind of name. I'll just call it white underscore wine. And the assignment statement in R is the left arrow, whereas in Python it's just equals. And in R, the difference is that we do a read.csv. And inside the parentheses, we'll load in our white. Uh, inside the parentheses are white wine training. So we're going to go ahead and run that by pressing the play button. And it went green, so there's no error. As you can see in the console, there's no error, so that's good. And let's say we want to further inspect this data set as such. We can just do a head, open parentheses, and inside, the cool thing about R Studio is when you start typing things in, um, you can uh, they become more or less automatic. So let's inspect the uh, the data frame of the white wine. Interesting. So let's do the same thing now for Python. So this is really cool. So after you have Reticulate installed into R Studio, you can now there's a lot of cross functionality, and we'll go ahead and stitch this into one neat R markdown document uh, in just a minute. So we're going to go ahead and up top, click on insert, this time Python, and see now uh, these, uh, this chunk is, uh, it says Python next to it, not R. And you can, of course, if you want to go manual, you can change this to R, but I like doing insert because it saves, saves a lot of time. And as you recall from Python, we'll use the same um, variable name or the same data frame name. We'll call it white wine, this time equals P 
PD for pandas, but what did we forget to do? We forgot to import pandas. Remember we installed pandas? So much like specifying in, uh, library open parentheses and so on and so forth, which we actually do want to do library reticulate and also, and I think that I spelled that wrong. I think I spelled that wrong, reticulate, reticulate. We actually want to, don't make the same mistake as me. You want to import your reticulate library in R. So we're going to put that up top inside the setup chunk for R. Uh, we're going to run that first. And we're going to go back here to Python, import pandas as PD. So we can say white wine equals PD dot read underscore csv and then load in the same data set let's go ahead and run that okay and now let's go ahead and inspect the uh the first five rows only in python recall that it will be white underscore wine dot head open close parentheses now let's go ahead and run that oh white wine is not defined okay so what happened here oh i spelled wine wrong syntax and spelling is very important let's go ahead and run that again and we have our data set now in both python and r and for the purposes of this very very brief illustration we're going to go ahead and uh, now knit so there's two ways to do this. By default, we specify that this is a PDF document, so we can just hit knit, but I'm a little bit uh, careful. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the drop down on knit and ensure as an extra layer of protection to knit this to a PDF. As it's knitting, look at the console window because it's gonna run every single chunk. It's gonna tell you there's gonna be an output file, any kind of error that's going to come through here and believe me more often than not you will see an error or two. This is why it's very important to read this console window and examine each line in case there's an error. So once we have our neat looking R markdown document it's all on one PDF file like this, we can proceed to save it as a normal PDF file it actually already saves it to your working directory, so if I close this out in quadrant four you'll see that we have a file here saved as reticulate.pdf. So for the purposes of this brief illustration, this is really the, uh, the quick ins and outs of using the different features of R and Python and R Markdown specifically for its cross-functionality between two coding languages. And um, that'll do it.